Okay, hello. My name is Jens Steder. I'm from the University of Bremen. And we just started, or we uh, have a, a position paper. I would like to integrate on that plus plus and move eight to do some smart grid simulations. So the motivation in general. Our current power grid uh, changes. So we get a lot of uh, renewable energy resources, have an increasing number of decentralized power. Uh, as we have several households, we have a photovoltaic system or combined heat and power units inside. And we get have an increasing number of electric vehicles, which need a lot of power, but could be also used to uh, stabilize our power grid. At the other hand, the communication networks change as well, and we have uh, some challenges. As we have the con uh, internet connectivity available almost everywhere, we have the Internet of Things, and uh, we could use it to do some real-time control of the power grid using um, the Internet of Things. The question is how to simulate the power grid entities with uh, communication capabilities. Um, yeah. The main challenges of co-simulation, which is one approach to do this, is that most of the power grid simulator platforms perform a discrete time simulation. And most network simulators perform a discrete event simulation. So we have a problem how to uh, synchronize both types of simulators. So there is some existing work. One is um, an open-net simulink test net for analyzing the effects of the cyber intrusion of uh, power grids. This is uh, done by the uh, University of Memphis. Um, there's a huge framework uh, called uh, Phoenix, FNCS, um, which is a um, power grid simulation framework, this, which supports um, several power grid simulators and related simulators, uh, but is based on uh, NS3 as a network simulator. Uh, this is developed by the Pacific North Waste Laboratory in Richland in the US. Um, there are several works dealing with OpNet and OpenDSS, and they're used to simulate smart grid scenarios, but they are only focused on OpenDSS and just, which, uh, is just one simulator. Uh, there are several work by uh, the Optical Zeitgeist Laboratory, IMRS, at the McGill University in Canada, and uh, at the Department of Computer Science and Engineering from the Indian Institute of Technology in, in Madrid. And Omnet is also used to analyze some uh, measurements from the uh, real measurements from the power grid. There's some example work from the communication networks from the uh, TU Dortmund. These solutions have the drawbacks that they only focus on a few simulators. They um, have just one or two simulators they support, or they use NS3 or Omnet instead of Omnet for the simulation. Or um, these approaches we use, uh, which use Omnet. In this case, Omnet takes the control of the complete simulation. Um, at the other hand, um, there are several interesting work, especially with this uh, Phoenix network, how to uh, combine um, the discrete time and the discrete event simulation, how to do it, uh, and how to synchronize both types of simulators. So now I'd like to introduce Mosaic. Mosaic is a flexible co-simulation platform for power grids. It uh, performs the discrete time in, um, simulation and is developed by Office Energy and the University uh, of Oldenburg, both are located in Oldenburg, Germany. Um, and it's used for the CESAR lab, which is a smart energy simulation and automatization laboratory. And it's available for free um, under the LGPL license, uh, available at Bitbucket. Um, the webpage is mosaic.office.de and the docs are all uh, available for free. What are the advantages of Mosaic? So Mosaic supports a remarkable number of simulators and simulator types. Uh, types. We, not, we did not have just a power grid simulator. We can uh, use uh, simulators for the environment, for the weather conditions, for example, for the photovoltaic system. How about the, sun, the sunshine, the, sun, um, uh, the power of the sun? How about the wind for the windmills? How, many, uh, how much energy we can gain from the windmills? Uh, we can include um, simulators for the energy market, when is the energy the cheapest, when it's more expensive, um, especially for, uh, for industrial um, applications, it is uh, very interesting. And we have some basic support for um, information and communication system, which is uh, just the uh, data uh, to control, for example, um, a windmill. 
Um, we have a nice visualization pl uh, platform um, to show uh, the power grid scenario. We have the business ser services where available by office and we have support for a simulation cluster, for example, offered by uh, Office Energy. Um, altogether, it's well uh, documented. We have several simulation scenarios um, and uh, everything is available online, free for everybody. And it's open source, as I mentioned. So, uh, however, this mosaic framework um, assumes a perfect uh, communication link between all these entities. And that's what we want to change. Um, about the mosaic system, we have this mosaic here in the center and we connect all other um, simulators uh, to this core and the mosaic orchestrates between the simulators so it takes control of the simulators and um, says, okay, you can go forward um, this time instance. Um, and we like to embed on it as one of these simulators. How to do it? We have basically three ways to communicate with this mosaic core. Uh, one is just write um, a Python module and uh, implement several um, several functions. The other one is that a mosaic calls an arbitrary comment line, um, uh, an arbitrary program, and uh, use a return value to um, to uh, for further processing. And the third uh, way is to use just a TCP stream to a socket to connect to a simulation server. For the API, we have uh, two ways. One is a high-level API, one is a low-level API. Uh, the low-level API, we have just a spare socket where we communicate with the high-level API, as I've already mentioned, um, that we uh, implement uh, several Python functions to communicate. The calls are more or less the same. The way to, how to do it is a little bit uh, different, but the functionality is almost the same. These are uh, the most important are the API calls we need to uh, perform on, or with uh, Mosaic perform. We have Mosaic here at the left hand side and the right hand side an arbitrary simulator for example on it. Uh, first Mosaic um, calls the init function um, and uh, gets some metadata back from the simulator. What kind of simulator is it? What uh, capabilities does it have? What uh, kind of uh, entities it can create? Afterwards um, uh, Mosaic calls this create function and uh, creates the, the entities uh, required for the uh, overall simulation. Um, the simulator uh, returns uh, the entities and their probabilities back uh, to the Mosaic call. Um, afterwards, um, this is optional commands called setup done, which is required sometimes, uh, just uh, in which uh, Mosaic just tells, okay, we are uh, now ready to start the simulation. And then we have this loop where we uh, just say, okay, step, where we tell, okay, uh, perform the next, uh, the, uh, the next simulation step. Here we can pass several uh, parameters um, to the simulator, and the simulator returns the next time step. It means it says, okay, I want to be called the next, uh, um, the next time at a certain time step. And afterwards, we can call several times to get data, to get um, the simulated data from the external simulator back to Mosaic. And we repeat it until the simulation ends. As a result, uh, we have a web interface where we um, get such a simulation. This is from the example uh, setup uh, where we go online. Uh, we have several houses, a PQ bus, which basically is a power bus, uh, photovoltaic uh, systems, and the reference bus. The reference bus is this black dot over here, so just uh, to the higher level um, power grid. Um, the uh, photovoltaic systems are the green uh, circles over there, the houses are the blue ones, and the red one is the marked uh, one which is shown here. In this example, it's a, uh, it is a photovoltaic system, so we see we have uh, this feeds in um, at maximum around uh, 8 kilowatts into the system until the sunset, it means that uh, until um, 4 or 5 p.m. That's basically the idea of Mosaic. And uh, I want to discuss some points about Omnet, but as most of you seem to be familiar with it, it's just one slide. Um, how to do this co-simulation using Omnet and uh, Mosaic. Uh, in most cases, as I mentioned, uh, Omnet controls the simulation. 
there's no uh, obvious way to control uh, OpNet externally that <coughs> uh, say uh, tell OpNet to uh, execute a simulation event by event. Um, but due to the modularized uh, architecture of OpNet, that should be just a minor task to implement uh, such a function. And how to combine it, how, or how we thought about how to combine both simulators. So, at the left hand side, we have an um, example set up in uh, Mosaic, and at the uh, right hand side, we have the uh, corresponding representation of the same scenario uh, in OpNet. So, we have um, assumed that the windmill, this combined heat and power unit, multi family house, and so on, here on the left hand side, are connected using um, a wired connection. Um, the same for the house one and house two, which are over here, um, which makes it a little bit more uh, interesting. We said, okay, um, the photovoltaic system may be placed in a remote place, and therefore we have just a wireless connection or cellular system, uh, cellular connection uh, to the uh, to the network core. Similar holds for the electric vehicle. Ele an electric vehicle may uh, request charging resources um, while driving home on. Uh, transmit the, the current status of the battery, therefore it has also a cellular connection to the, uh, to the phone or to the, to the internet. And how to, uh, what to do or how to achieve such a simulation scenario, we, uh, we identify basically three steps. First, we have to extract some um, network information from the mosaic framework and use it to build our um, uh, Omnet uh, scenario. The second is we need a full external control of Omnet and uh, imp implement uh, the Mosaic API. And at the end, we like to, uh, uh, to improve the performance. Extract the communication network is quite an easy task as uh, Mosaic uses a JSON file to describe the simulation. Uh, this can be extended easily to uh, describe the additional entities or capabilities of the entities to. Um, for example, uh, the communication links. Uh, we need, just need to convert this data to a net file and load it into OpNet. The second step is, uh, I've mentioned the adaptations uh, to OpNet. So we need to do the following. We need to initialize the uh, simulation, run the events by events, pass the results back to Mosaic. Um, there need to be a way to insert these uh, events uh, externally, for example, using streams or packets. Um, if there are some uh, errors, we need to forward them to Mosaic, and at the end we have to finish the simulation. This corresponds more or less to the, um, to the uh, Mosaic API I shown before. How to achieve this? We thought about um, implementing functions uh, comparable to the already existing simulate function. So start a simulation with simulate with control, step forward <coughs> one event, or uh, use a simulate until uh, function to uh, simulate it until uh, a certain time step. Uh, one may ask, okay, why not just use a real-time simulation but both simulators uh, run um, at the real-time mode and use communication or like the embedded example um, in OnNet. The point is uh, the simulation of the smart grid may take a very long time. So uh, we like to simulate maybe half a year or a year of a smart grid scenario just to get uh, the influence of the weather of the uh, year. Uh, and we are not willing to wait one year for our results. <laughs> Um, the other point is, uh, if we have a really complex scenario, maybe I'm not able to run it on a simulation cluster, uh, it's just not possible to run the cluster simulation in real time. The improvements of this approach, um, as I said, okay, we, we use uh, uh, event-based uh, synchronization, uh, which is quite inefficient to call on that every um, event again and again. So the idea is, is there a way to uh, pass the results on with the application layer? Um, is there a way to synchronize both and time to it? Um, can we use uh, multiple um, event simulation? Uh, so can we somehow predict or look at um, a table to um, say, okay, we can go forward uh, this time? Can we identify some uh, independent communication flows and split them up into several simulations? Or uh, maybe we can use um, several uh, of the parallelization techniques in Omnet. So, 
So that's basically our idea what we want to do, what we are moving forward. And doing this, we will uh, get, um, we think that integrating open and in Mosaic will result in a power grid uh, simulator capable to simulate not only the energy, but also the communication things and then for nowadays and future uh, grid scenarios. So the main tasks are enable external control of Omnet, implement a Mosaic API, convert Mosaic metadata to the .NET file, and the end improves the performance. So that's basically our idea. And now I hope I will get some comments from your side. Thank you. So again, perfect timing. We have time for lots of questions. Um, I think you get the hack by now why it's called Beyond Omnet this session. Um, while the first work mainly showed like Omnet is still in control and we integrate several frameworks based on Omnet, we have a good example here I like about the paper that uh, Omnet is um, it's not in control, it's just one of the wheels on the car that drives the smart grid. And especially good. Uh, just coming for you. Uh, I like it that uh, those external influences, like the real world scenario that we have here with the smart grid, like the weather conditions, the financial aspects of uh, how to sell power, when to sell it, for which prices, that it would be quite hard to model these things and simulate them anyway and on that. So why not leverage on the option that we have of uh, a good simulator like Mosaic in this case and just use Omnet as the fourth wheel of uh, Network communication, what's strong? It's its strong points. I really like that. And they've put a lot of energy into this Mosaic framework. They have um, support for several open source uh, simulators and also for some uh, uh, commercial ones, So, um, which are not obviously are not uh, the area where they do. Do they already have like support for NS3, the Arch simulator? I don't think so. Okay, I think so they have no the first they, thing. Yeah. They just assume they have perfect communication link. Mm -hmm. um, and therefore neglected the communication between the entities completely. But as I said, it's increasing and communication is getting more and more important, especially if you maybe in integrate uh, wireless sensor networks and so on. It's, uh, we cannot assume a perfect simulation, uh, a perfect communication link and need such a solution. So maybe a question to start off. Um, do you need extra communication uh, models, extra um, standards that are not supported yet by Omnet? Um, I can mention from the smart grid background that I have, it's not really deep, um, that there are some standards of uh, how to uh, connect devices inside a house that are not yet available and on that. Yeah, but I think most of the standards are um, capable of use just TCP connection. So for the first step, I would fo uh, focus on such type of uh, communication or, uh, technologies and maybe mm -hmm. a step further we can uh, think about other ones, but for the first step, uh, I think we just use them and then think about others. But I think most of uh, the communication uh, moves toward uh, IP-based uh, because they want to use the internet for the remote control. So, questions from the audience? Yes. Um, yeah, the two comments. Um, for code simulation, you could probably look at the veins, how veins is implemented, because veins is basically code simulation of that based simulator and the sumo traffic network card, sim network sim road network simulator. And the second one is, actually there is a standard for for the, for the connecting different simulators for co-simulation, co and it's called HLA, High Level Architecture. It's a wonderful name because it doesn't tell you anything. <laughs> 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 so HLA was introduced in the US by the Department of Defense like 15, 20 years ago, and actually defines a very high level API for connecting simulators. Like participants, they are called feathers. They can publish attributes, they can process external events, they can publish events, and they can define various uh, synchronization methods, time synchronization methods. But uh, actually, I don't really see HLA being used anywhere else than, than military. People don't seem to like it. Probably the interface is like too too complex or too um, official sounding. I don't know. And also for HLA, you need you need middleware. So there are open source HLA implementations, which do the actually the uh, implement the communication between between the federates and 
for the participants, for thirds, you have to implement the HLA API to plug into, into a federation. That's how it's set up. The open source implementation for HLA, we haven't really used any of them. But it's maybe worth having a look to see how they approach the problem. So um, I think this HLA was, uh, or uh, the developers also most likely discussed this HLA uh -huh. solution, but I'm not sure what was the reason not to use this one. Uh -huh. um, so I heard this name, but there was yeah. some reason where I said that that's the reason why I used it, uh, our own implementation. Yeah, they probably thought HLA is like over-engineered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> Thanks for the comment. Uh, additional questions? Questions, comments, hints? Sure. Um, so security is a big issue. Any work doing any models for security yet or anything like that planned in the future? No. no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the, the first step, we just first started step. working on it. And therefore, I uh, thought about how to integrate it. Is it possible? Is there, uh, because it's most like it's, it's really fun to work with it. And now we uh, thought about, okay, can we use it in security? Uh, of course. Um, it's one major point, but to first step, do the integration and afterwards. What is specifically, uh, specifically for security or like communication security you or the network data security? security. You know, mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of attacks mm -hmm. people worried about. Um, I know my colleague David Nickel in uh, Illinois has been very active in sort of security for various things, one of them being grid the networks, mm -hmm. but this might be an interesting vehicle for, for investigating. But we are free. We are, uh, have this JSON description, and we can add maybe some encryp uh, encryption uh, values or tunnels and so on. And uh, we are free how to define our uh, internet connection or our connection between the entities. And uh, if you keep it in a generic way, we can uh, of course use it uh, to open, uh, implement this encrypted connection or so on, to check it. And I think an interesting point regarding security here is that uh, you have a holistic view of the whole system and especially in smart grid, I'm not always uh, sure that people consider, they just consider like the basic transmission security, okay, this goes from one computer to another, it's via an uh, SSL socket connection, <coughs> it's secure. Or well, what happens with the data that I gather here in the another system, um, it might not be under attack here, but it might be under another system and under attack and those kind of security uh, attacks could be maybe considered here. We have the whole holistic system. So. Uh, same as if we have some uh, systems like um, uh, windmill and have just um, the wireless connection. Uh, how about this terms of the wireless link? We can could simulate such a thing. What happens if we have the, the connection uh, to a remote location is just lost? It's true. And I mean, just from from the online point of view, when we look at uh, security of communication protocols, we tend to omit things like Stuxnet where uh, the communication was perfectly fine, it was just the values that were sent that messed up everything. And uh, well, if you can take a look at the values, have some meaning behind them, can see like uh, uh, coincidences that happen at several systems that might be also quite interesting. One last question from the audience. Yeah. And one thing uh, on this topic is uh, for the control of windmills and all this stuff and uh, smart grid, you have to use this, uh, the standard is the IC61850, and there you have a lot of, I don't know, uh, constraints on your communication, so um, yeah, you have to yeah, give a signal to the, to the remote um, switch or something in, in within some milliseconds of this stuff. And so you have to yeah, use communication models, which yeah, you, have to, you can try out yeah, what happens if this is not it's not the case. So if you have to, yeah, and maybe it's not it's not necessary at all. And because, in my opinion, this uh, constraints given in the IC sixty one eight fifty are just I don't know just um, defined somewhere. But it is not. There's uh, actually there's uh, for my opinion there's a need on on research what is actually necessary is it is necessary to give a signal within a couple of milliseconds to the remote switch or something and then you for with your communication network you can try it out and do some simulation thing. yeah so let's give a number of big thanks to Jens for his interesting talk
Okay. Bye.